All right, guys, so we are looking at pages 29, 30, and 31 of the 5th grade ELA uh, grade recovery packet. So they give you the rough draft of an essay uh, called Climbing Mount Whitney, and they want you to read through it, and then they want you to answer some questions that have to do with editing, fixing mistakes, uh, something that we didn't get to do a lot of time with with typed out um, essays. Normally, you would write them, and then when you type them, that's supposed to be your final draft. But you're going to have more experience in sixth grade with the Google Chrome apps and both social studies class and in ELA. And you'll be doing research and you'll be typing papers um, on your own and possibly with partners. And so you're going to need to be able to go back through what you've typed and make corrections. So you have this uh, short little uh, essay that a student wrote about uh, climbing Mount Whitney. And then you have some questions. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the questions. So... Um, Question 23 on page 30, it says, I read all about it in a library book, Climbing Mount Whitney. It says, what is the correct way to write the title of the book? Now, we did a little bit of this when we would write essays together um, in our notebooks. I would always put the title in quotations. Now, they have, um, they have option A, B, C, or D. What you want is to look for the title that's in quotations and nothing else. And they try to trick you with A because that's actually not, um, that, that's, that's not uh, quotation marks. Um, so you look at the options and I know we've sometimes talked about writing things in italics. But that's not for a library book. Or it's not for a book. You wouldn't write it in italics. Um, sometimes we do articles, uh, titles of uh, poems, um, short stories, um, selections from other, from other books. We put them at a slant. And I've talked a little bit about that in class. But for the title of a book, you should know from class that the answer is D. Uh, climbing Mount Whitney with parentheses around it. So for question 23 on page 30, the answer is D. All right, now we go to page 31. It says, read the sentence from the essay. Yes, you can do it, comma, but you'll need some preparation. Which of the following should replace the underlined part to make the sentence correct? And um, for this, you're going to need some uh, punctuation. Yes, comma, you can do it, comma, but you'll need some preparation. So the answer is B. For 24, the answer is B. All right, 25 says, read the sentence from the essay. This is one of those where when I try to get you to proofread your work, it's good to read something out loud and hear how it sounds and see if you can catch the mistakes. If you do this, you avoided the headaches and cramps that can trouble climbers at high elevations. On the lines below, rewrite the sentence with the correct verb tense for the underlying word. So the problem is they put the word avoided. That puts it in the past tense. So you want to ask yourself, okay, the past tense is wrong. How should I write this? If you do this, you avoid the headaches and cramps that can trouble climbers at high elevations. That's possible. You could also say, if you do this, comma, you will avoid the headaches and cramps that can trouble climbers at high elevations. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it in that tense. So I'm going to write, if you do this, comma, you can, sorry, you will avoid if you do this comma, you will avoid the headaches and cramps that can trouble, oh, my pen's going out, that can trouble climbers at high elevations. Period. All right, question 26. By the end of about eight hours, you will had reached 
the top of Mount Whitney. Those are mistakes, by the way, that any of us can make when we're writing something out, and it's that proofreading that's important. You know if you were in class with me, we'd write those big essays. I'd make mistakes all the time just writing them off the top of my head, and I'd have to go back and look at them, and sometimes you would catch the mistakes. These are mistakes that anybody can make. Um, you need to be able to go back and find them. So by the end of about eight hours, comma, you will have reached the top of Mount Whitney. How should the underlying part be corrected? And you can, what you do is take those options and plug them in if you don't know already. So by the end of about eight hours, comma, you reach the top of Mount Henry. I'm sorry, Mount Henry. Sorry, thinking of something else. Mount Whitney. Um, that doesn't make sense. Uh, by the end of about eight hours, comma, you had been reaching the top. Doesn't make sense. And that sounds like a bad mistake that I would make if I'm thinking in my head and writing at the same time. By the end of about eight hours, comma, you have reached the top of Mount Whitney. Sounds pretty good. By the end of about eight hours, comma, you will have reached the top of Mount Whitney. D, will have in the future, future tense. All right, so that is pages 30, 31, and, sorry, 29, 30, and 31. So we're getting there if you're working kind of steadily along. We want to try to get these done. The school is asking by May 14th, have them turned in that day, if at all possible. Thanks. Hope you guys are doing well. See ya.